so what's a fact? The fact is that SIM is the primary tool for security monitoring. This is uh, something that's probably in, in many large organizations, in more and more smaller organizations. That is the go-to place to do to monitor your uh, security events. Uh, another fact, unfortunate fact, uh, is that uh, it has failed. It is it has considered it has been considered a failure uh, in detecting and responding to threats. We have uh, poured uh, sometimes millions uh, into SIM projects, and in the end, they were just uh, glorified log collectors. Uh, at least that's the perception. Uh, there are obviously the, the exceptions. Uh, so how it used to be and how it largely is in, in many uh, places, uh, we get the SIM after probably a procurement procedure, uh, and then we connect the firewall, we connect uh, the Active Directory, obviously, uh, some other network and security products, the DNS, the proxy, the email security, the IDS, the uh, AV, the next gen AV, the EDR, or whatever that we have purchased recently. Uh, and then we hope to detect threats by uh, a limited set of, uh, of correlation rules, uh, which the vendor provides and hopefully uh, updates uh, as times go, time goes by. Uh, that didn't quite work. Uh, it hasn't quite worked. Uh, and that's why uh, we have security conferences uh, to discuss how to get things better. Uh, how to actually detect these threats, uh, not just the simple ones, uh, but uh, also the, the complex ones. Uh, and there probably can be a, a whole uh, seminar on the topic why SIM didn't work. Uh, some of the, of the drawbacks, there's too much noise. So we, yeah, we should ingest indeed all, all of the logs that we can, but that turns into a lot of noise. Uh, that turns into alert fatigue uh, because you require a lot of fine tuning uh, on what's been ingested, on what generates an alert, uh, on which alerts to ignore. Uh, and so uh, combined with the inflexibility of rules sometimes, uh, it really makes it, uh, as I said before, a glorified log collector uh, with a bunch of uh, emails uh, about known malicious uh, IPs, but uh, not rarely beyond that. And cost, cost has been really a, a problem. Uh, and yes, some vendors uh, have been pricing by, by volume, volumes have increased, uh, budgets have not. Uh, and so that, that has uh, become an issue. Uh, so how, how to solve it? Well, uh, maybe we should go for some next gen thing or next gen SIM, for example. Uh, Gartner doesn't believe there is a next gen SIM. They, they believe that uh, everything that's currently a SIM is a next gen SIM. Uh, and we have added very useful tools like SOAR, like uh, UEBA, uh, and something uh, that has been quite trendy recently, the XDR, Extended Det Detection and Response. Uh, and has that been able to solve all, all of our uh, issues magically? Well, as we are in cybersecurity, we know there is no solution uh, uh, in, in sight. Uh, so we have to work and work and work. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're not quite there yet. Uh, by the way, maybe an unpopular opinion, and I hope that nobody from Gartner is here. Uh, I think next gen SIM is equal to XDR. I know that there can be a long discussion about that, uh, but basically every single feature that uh, and capability that is uh, in the advertised XDR category uh, is and should actually be available in the next gen SIM. Uh, but let's not go into the terminology. Uh, Gartner will uh, excuse me. Uh, so what's, uh, what's missing? Well, a lot of things, uh, but what we're usually missing is information that's not in the logs. Uh, and we'll speak about what uh, that might be. Uh, we're also too often missing business specific events. Uh, so yeah, we are uh, collecting the, the network stuff and the security stuff, uh, but we have a lot of applications uh, that uh, contain critical data uh, that we're not monitoring at all. Um, we are missing uh, some very good enrichment capabilities, and I'll speak about that in a bit. Uh, and something else is the uh, friendliness for MSSPs. Now, uh, to, to put a kind of a broader view on the market, uh, we have the Fortune 500 companies or the very large corporations that already have a SIM, probably from IBM, uh, and they're kind of set. Uh, you've sold them the huge license, uh, they're there. Uh, and then you have the, the mid-market, uh, which are the smaller to mid-sized companies, uh, which they don't have a SIM because it's expensive. They don't have a SIM because they don't have the people to manage that. Uh, and their only option and the right thing to do is to go to a managed security service provider. 
Um, the problem is that most of these sims uh, haven't been designed with an MSSP in mind. They were kind of uh, put into that uh, box uh, as an afterthought, uh, and MSSPs can tell you that it's indeed the case. Uh, so what, what's not in the logs? I mean, we usually, uh, as I said, point the, the firewalls, point the active directories, uh, the IDSs and, and stuff, but uh, there are other things that uh, they're not only complementing what we've already collected, they are essential for getting the real 360 degree view that everyone's advertising to, to be offering. Uh, they're not in specific order, but file integrity monitoring is the first thing uh, that might come with a separate tool. Uh, and that's what XDR promised to be. I mean, they, they, it promises to be uh, the magic thing that has everything in one place. Uh, so file integrity monitoring is one thing. Uh, data source health check, my, my favorite thing. Uh, and I'll mention the uh, US Senate discussion about the solar winds uh, breach. When uh, Senator Gillibrand asked uh, the CEOs of uh, I think FireEye uh, and the solar winds and the, the rest, uh, why nothing went off uh, when the malware uh, stopped the uh, EDR agent, the endpoint agent? And there was not a good answer to that. They said, well, they had root access, they could really uh, shut down anything. Uh, that's true, but we should monitor the health check of all of our sources. And if something stops sending logs, that might be a network issue. We should investigate that. That might be a malicious actor, and we should certainly investigate that. So anytime something really stops for a long time, uh, or at least uh, uh, that should be configurable, obviously, uh, we should be alerted and allowed to investigate with all of the considerations of alert fatigue uh, being said. Uh, so something not sending logs is actually information that's not in the logs, but is very, very, very important. Uh, network traffic monitoring. Uh, another aspect that uh, we're kind of overlooking and uh, sometimes for a good reason. So that includes NetFlow, SFlow, IP fix, uh, just to monitoring the raw packet, the full packet capture options. Uh, why for a good reason? Because uh, everything being encrypted, uh, there is not too much useful information there anyway, uh, except for the headers, which are very useful. Uh, and uh, the discussion usually goes, well, should we do something uh, like a, basically a man in the middle so that we can inspect all of the encrypted traffic uh, and then uh, send it to its destination? Uh, my view on that is that no, we shouldn't man in the middle our own company, uh, although it has some, some upsides. Uh, leaked credentials monitor. Uh, basically, uh, getting all of the emails in your organization and checking them against databases of known leaks. Have I been pwned? Uh, has been kind of a popular one, not the only one. Uh, so that's something that's very, very useful and can really prevent uh, serious issues. The Colonial Pipeline uh, breach that uh, kind of uh, was a huge issue in the US recently. Uh, they, I think the, the way that it was reported, uh, there were leaked credentials somewhere on the magic dark web uh, and someone got those, they matched the VPN credentials of the user and they were in. Uh, another thing that's uh, very often overlooked, and I think there are a couple of services, dedicated services for that, but uh, too often ignored, uh, is monitoring the integrity of uh, website static resources. Uh, that is best illustrated with the British Airways data breach from a couple of years ago, uh, when malicious actors managed to ingest uh, malicious JavaScript on their payment page uh, and then exfiltrated credit card numbers as they were typing them. Uh, now, there is the initial event where they managed to kind of uh, breach their asset server, but that having been noticed, uh, they didn't get any security event from uh, the credit card exfiltration because it happened in the browser. It didn't happen on, on their server. Uh, so you should really actively monitor these uh, scripts on critical pages, uh, which can leak financial information or, uh, or other uh, interesting information. Uh, security configuration assessment. So what is the, the current state of our endpoints? Uh, honeypots, uh, other sources of, of useful information that is not necessarily logs, they can turn that information into logs. Obviously, that's the, the unit that we're working with. Uh, but uh, detecting lateral movement is something very important. And if, if you start seeing traffic at your honeypot, obviously, cause for alarm. But you have to know not just that someone's trying to, to get there, but uh, what they're trying to do. Uh, is it SSH? Uh, are they trying to abuse a Netgear vulnerability in the web console, or uh, what is it? Uh, and also uh, relational database uh, management system monitoring. Uh, 
when we speak about data breaches, uh, it's usually about dumping databases. Yeah, surely stolen files, uh, stolen backups, etc. Uh, but uh, you have to really be monitoring your uh, relational database management systems because the data is there. They, they manage your data in a very structured, very easy to use uh, by malicious actors uh, format. Um, that, that sometimes comes in the forms of logs, sometimes you have to do additional configuration, but that's not something that uh, unfortunately is typically uh, collected. Business specific events, uh, there's a lot of domain specific, specific applications out there. Mm, very rarely they have been uh, connected to, to the to log monitoring. Uh, because yeah, you, you don't have IPs there, you don't have uh, domains, you don't have file hashes, not the typical thing that you can check against threat intelligence, uh, correlate between the, the firewall and the AIDS. Uh, but there is uh, a lot of useful information there. For example, you uh, find it very useful to connect your uh, accounting system. Uh, and it may happen that it's not SAP financials uh, and it's some homegrown or locally built uh, in a garage, uh, as it often happens, um, accounting system, which generates some logs, but they're useful to see if uh, someone's not checking on your financial uh, information, which might be quite uh, sensitive. Uh, ERPs and SAP in particular, uh, I was quite surprised that uh, we, we actually even got a quote from a uh, request for a quote from a Fortune 500 company because of our uh, agentless collection of SAP uh, security events, uh, because apparently competitors are using some complicated plugins that uh, are not fit for uh, this organization's requirements. Uh, so ERPs, they have, they have useful information like create contact, uh, create order, create purchase, or delete uh, stuff. And so you want to monitor the deletes. Uh, you want to monitor the deletes out of hours. Uh, these are not things that we, we're typically used to um, kind of um, cram into the security monitoring aspect, but uh, they are security monitoring. Uh, it's very in interesting if someone deletes uh, your uh, products uh, out of hours. Um, uh, again, relational databases. Uh, this is change data capture. You, we can we can really uh, create audit logs out of well, not out of thin air. But databases provide that capability. Uh, but uh, our tools should not only be capable, but we should actively look for uh, getting those those audit logs. Uh, and uh, needless to say, software as a service that is a, a very uh, big field where uh, there are a couple of integrations with uh, obviously Azure, AWS, uh, GCP, Microsoft 365, uh, all of these things, but there are countless uh, software as a service applications that don't have APIs. They don't have any proper way for you to monitor. Uh, and uh, you can fall back to, uh, to some broker or some proxy where you go through that in order to detect what's, what's happening there. Uh, and you probably should do that because uh, you're, sometimes a business's core system is the SaaS for its uh, business operation. For example, a veterinary cabinet uh, or a huge clinic. They have some SaaS for, for managing their uh, dogs and their customers, and that's where their main information is. Uh, you should probably monitor what's happening there. Mm, and enrichment. Now, Every sim has some enrichment capabilities, get stuff from the DHCP, from the Active Directory, uh, from DNS, uh, all of these things are there. Uh, but we should really expand that, uh, not, but not just by having a feature on a data sheet, but really actively uh, fetching enrichment stuff from custom databases, from custom APIs, uh, allowing for some enrichment chain. So get this data from this source and then check it against this source and then check, it, check the intermediate result against the other source and then enrich my logs with that information. Like uh, the most obvious thing is uh, HR systems, but uh, things uh, don't end up there, uh, don't end there. Uh, it takes a little bit, the, the enrichment part takes a little bit of the sore spotlight because uh, many of the things that are usually advertised as a strong point of sore uh, can be done uh, kind of automatically before you even have to get to the sore. Like get me the WHOIS information or the RDAP uh, information, get me the IP reputation, get me all of these things. Uh, you shouldn't really have to uh, write automations and recipes for that. Uh, it can happen automatically in case of alert. Um, why rules are not enough? Uh, we know that, but uh, just as, a, as an overview, uh, they're, they're a necessity. I mean, anyone that tells you, yeah, rules are uh, old, they, they don't do any work, uh, just go to magic AI, uh, that's marketing uh, gibberish. Uh, rules are useful, they, they're there to stay, 
uh, but they should be complemented uh, with other things like statistical monitoring. Uh, are we monitoring any uh, change in uh, in the behavior of this source? Are we uh, monitoring any behavior in uh, behavior change for this user or this set of users or this group of users? Um, and then, then of ob obviously, machine learning. Uh, we should try to to get some machine learning models. Hopefully, our sims and our uh, other tools should provide those. Um, they are unfortunately a black box, and that's uh, here I agree with Gartner. Uh, machine learning is uh, nice, but you can't really explain it sometimes. And vendors should be transparent about that. Uh, unsupervised models, they can generate an alert, and you might never know why that was considered an anomaly. Uh, that we should have risk profiling. We have users in the system, they are the, the weak link, so we should check their, their uh, behavior and assign risk based on uh, their privileges, based on their typical activities, uh, all of these things. Threat intelligence, uh, that's kind of obvious, but uh, we should share threat intelligence. And that was discussed uh, in the previous panel. Uh, it's really important to, to share that, uh, that information, not keep it for ourselves. The question is how? Uh, we have taxi and sticks, but they're kind of haven't uh, yet got enough traction, unfortunately. Um, and then after the, all of these capabilities, we should proactively uh, look for things, the threat hunting. Now, unfortunately, threat hunting is uh, often just some glorified search. Uh, yeah, here's the search with some autocomplete and some nice uh, boxes, uh, which sim tools, uh, ours included, should go should go beyond that. We should have really um, suggestions, some some usual things to look for, some some help from the tool. Uh, and uh, yeah, fatigue will remain an issue with all of these additional detection techniques. Um, you will get additional alerts probably, so we have to manage uh, somehow. Uh, now you may argue, and you will be right, that we've had support for many of these things uh, in the past. Uh, they are on data sheets, they are uh, when um, the they sell you the, the thing, you, you check out, you tick out the boxes in the RFP. Uh, unfortunately, rarely they have been uh, seen and used uh, in practice, and that's where we uh, should be going when we do SIM implementations. Uh, a note on, on MSSP friendliness, uh, we actually by accident kind of discovered that our multi-tenant architecture uh, uh, fits that use case pretty well. Uh, we were speaking to an Italian partner uh, and they, they we were looking for resellers uh, and they said, well, can you show us a bit of uh, how you can handle the MSSP use case? And they were amazed that they don't have to log out from one of their customers to go to the other one. They were surprised that they don't have to keep different tabs uh, in incognito windows and stuff like that. Uh, and that's, I think, useful. It's admittedly a side effect of our architecture, not something that we had uh, initially planned. Uh, but it's proper multi-tenancy is very important, especially in the world where uh, a lot more organizations will need uh, security monitoring uh, and they would not be able to manage even if they're able to, to uh, afford uh, a SIM. Uh, the pricing models, they should also follow. I mean, uh, MSSPs should not be punished for uh, offering a service. On the contrary, uh, the more uh, service you offer with a given tool, the, the better discounts you should be getting. Um, the white labeling, needless to say, uh, and the flexibility of deployment. Uh, an MSSP may choose to use your cloud as a vendor. Uh, they may want to have their own on-premise deployment. Uh, they may uh, sometimes have some, some kind of hybrid. They may uh, want to use uh, parts of your uh, cloud and then some setup of their own. We have such a partner in Mexico. Uh, they have a great team that, that can play around even with the internals of our product. We use Elasticsearch underneath and they're Elasticsearch experts, so they want to uh, get their uh, hands dirty. Uh, so this is something that uh, should we, we should be looking uh, in the future because MSSPs are uh, the way that this mid-market is going to be served. Uh, no 200 uh, company, 200 people company would be able to afford to hire three or four security uh, engineers. That's that just these people do not exist yet. Uh, so, so is that it? I mean, is that just a bunch of features that uh, you have or probably you don't have, and uh, that's the future of security monitoring? Of course not. Uh, but we should change our mindset when we do the implementations. It's not about what's in the data sheet and what is in theory supported. Uh, it's just that the logs from the usual assessments, from the AD, from the firewall, and from um, 
a lot of those things, they're not enough. They have never been enough, uh, but that's uh, becoming more and more obvious. Uh, and that locks in general are, are not enough. We should look for all of the other signals uh, as, they, as they call them. Uh, some attacks are invisible in logs. Uh, that's why we should look at the network. We should look at uh, the leak credentials. Uh, we should look at uh, the database. And my final kind of uh, idea is that at, we should stop, start ignoring the acronyms that uh, analysts are throwing at us. Whatever, uh, it's SIM, it's XDR, it's uh, something else. We should focus on the capabilities that uh, we need and the capabilities that matter for preventing those uh, and at least detecting and responding to those threats. Thank you.